trusting in the 4K. Here we go. Hey, Sean, I'm editing this video in Premiere, and after I edited the last one in Premiere, I hated the keyer so much that I decided no green screen, we're just going with storage shelves in the background. Boom turned 10 years old uh, this past December. On December 16th, uh, Boom Reactive turned 10 years old, and I've learned a lot over those 10 years, and I have a whole lot more to learn, uh, as I think anyone who runs a business will tell you. So I, I, I thought for, for 10 years, I would make a video of 10 lessons that I've learned over those 10 years. And I want to be clear as I make this list that these 10 lessons are not things that like I've learned and now they're old hat and I've just, you know, they, they come second nature now. Like I learned that a long time ago and I always do it. These are things that some of which I've learned in the past week uh, and some of which even though I learned two, three years ago, I still struggle to, to adhere to and to remind myself of these truths uh, for me. And so I thought I would share these with you with the understanding that this is a working list. Not only is the list changing, but it's a list that each one of the things I'm still working on as a business owner and as a creative. Number one is don't be afraid of your clients. And this is one that I, that I really struggle with because a lot of times like you're, you're doing work that you've never done before and you're growing and your clients have to take a risk on you and I have this fear of disappointment and this fear that the client is going to be really upset that this didn't live up to their expectations um, or, or that things were disorganized or that you know I, I didn't get the shot we needed or I didn't prepare them properly um, and that they're, they're going to hate me when it's over. And so I get in these modes where I send a, a draft and then I don't hear from the client for a couple days and I start to get really scared and then I'm afraid of the phone call and I'm afraid of, of what they're thinking and never have I had a good client actually upset with me? And I always get off the phone with, with them after these anticipated phone calls, and I'm like, oh, oh, they also want this project to succeed. They want me to succeed. Turns out they're willing to work together to make everything happen. So my, my first rule that, that I've, I've come down to is don't be afraid of your clients. They want this project to work. They're not rooting for your failure, regardless of if you may think that they are and you may be afraid of taking that phone call. Take the phone call, finish the project, move forward. Don't be afraid, it's gonna be okay. Number two, when it's not okay, don't be afraid to fire bad clients. And the, and the other way I would put this is, be emotionally prepared to get screwed over because you will get screwed over and you, you can't let it get to you. I, I talked to, Tons of other creators and small business owners and people who have uh, you know, their, their own boutique agencies. Someone's going to take advantage of you. You can't let it wreck you. It's going to happen. Be ready for it. Move past the anger quickly and right into analysis. Start to look at, hey, how can I prevent this from happening again? Are there clients that you start to notice trends with where people always sort of you know, push back on your budget or nitpick things about your, your pricing and you start to notice that it's those clients that always end up being a problem later, you can start to use that analysis to say, hey, to avoid that later, I need to know not to work with people who do this upfront. And you can start to, to work your policies and your contracts in a way that helps you avoid those bad situations later on. Number three, start an LLC and get insurance. Um, it's a little bit of a hurdle and it's, a, it's an investment of, of cash up front, but it protects you and your family from being sued by horrible people if they would want to do that. Um, and it just helps you sleep better at night. Get that set up, get a good partner for insurance, and you'll be happy that you did. Number four, do work for friends and discount it when you do work for them, but never work for free for your friends. It gets in a weird situation. I know it's somewhat weird to ask for money from your friends, but if you're doing something that's creative and takes work and equipment, you're doing photography, you're bringing thousands of dollars of stuff with you, you can't keep doing favors or you will go broke very quickly, even for very nice people. So don't work for free, discount work for friends, but at least ask them to make some investment in you to show that they value what you're doing for them, if nothing else. Number five, partner with people. Partner with people who are more experienced than you and less experienced than you. Um, partner with anyone you can to create things and, and to, to do bigger projects. But 
be honest with them about your experience. Don't partner with somebody and, and promise them the moon of, you know, that if, if somebody hired me for a video and they're like, yeah, we wanna do a whole bunch of stuff with stop motion animation, I'm not gonna walk into that, that meeting and say, yeah, no problem, I've got cameras, I can do stop motion, we'll do it. Be honest and say, hey, I've never done anything like this before, I'm capable of it, we have the equipment, I know how we could do it, and I've been doing some research to, to do it well, but I haven't yet done it, this will be the first time. And that little bit of honesty will go a long way to making a much happier relationship where you avoid those feelings of fear where you've overpromised and underdelivered. Be open and upfront about your capabilities and, and about your passion because sometimes if you haven't done something before, being passionate about it and letting them know that will go a long way to letting them know that, that you're in it to make it successful. Number six, create policies and stick to them. Um, this is a newer one for me, but it's really become uh, a lifesaver. One of the, my newer policies is I don't sit down for a meeting with anyone until I have an idea of their budget because I've sat in too many meetings where I've gone back and forth. We've figured out everything. We've scheduled things. And then I, I give them the price because they're saying, you know, we don't have a budget yet. Well, I give them the price. You know, it's going to be $8,000. And they're like, we had a budget of $400 to $600. And it's like, that's on me. It's on me to find out. So now I make sure I have a ballpark of their budget before I sit down with them and that helps, it helps me create a better project for them and it helps me know off the bat, like am I going to need to bring in extra people, am I going to need to hire a crew, what sort of resources am I going to need to line up for the project. So there's things like that with my policies where after you learn a lesson the hard way a couple times, make a policy about it, put it on your website, put it in your, your fine print and be, a, be upfront about it and say, you know, this is my policy. I need to, be, before we sit down, before we talk details of any project, I need to know what your rough budget is for this. Lesson seven was told to me the day I started my company and I feel like I've learned it every week over the past 10 years and I'm still working on it. And as I closed my studio and I'm now working from home, it's become much harder and I have to relearn this lesson, but clock out. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a solopreneur, if you work from home especially, clock out. Work, work hard, but when you're done for the day, you've got to stop because if you start doing little tasks here and there and oh, I'm gonna watch TV and I'm gonna answer some emails, those emails are gonna be bad. You're, you're not gonna be as thoughtful as you should be and you're not gonna enjoy what you're watching. You're not gonna spend time with the people you wanna spend time with and it's not gonna be as meaningful if you do and you're constantly sort of working on little things and checking your accounts and, and checking your email on your phone. Clock out, leave your stuff in another room. For me, I don't have a laptop because with a laptop, I can't trust myself. I will work everywhere and always. So I have an iMac and I leave it in the corner of my office and when I'm sitting in front of it, I use it and I can't edit when I'm away. I can't just work on one little thing while I'm out waiting for something. I have to be dedicated to my work and I, I dive in. You have to clock out. And the same goes for when, when you're getting emotional about something, when you have client work that's bothering you, that's stressful, you've got to leave it at work. And again, even if you work from home, if your partner comes home, uh, if, if you go out with your friends and all you do is complain about work, they won't like talking to you about it and you won't like yourself after a while. So you've got to have a healthy relationship with work and life. Uh, and so leave that stuff at work, let it be work, work through it in a healthy way, but don't bring it into your personal life if you can. Number eight is a technical one, but it's simple. Live in the cloud. And I know people have varying thoughts about security and things like that. Yeah, be careful with your security and your payment information and stuff like that. But all of your notes, your emails, uh, anything that you do, client uh, project preparation, things like that, store everything in the cloud. But be smart about it and, and, and put yourself in a situation where if your life is on that laptop and something happens to that laptop, your life isn't over too. Number nine is a fun one and this one, uh, I, I really like, but get something made with your name on it. It's a little thing, but I remember when I first started Boom, I made a couple really nice golf shirts that had Boom Reactive on them. And when I wore them around, I felt cool, I felt established, and people take you seriously. It's a little thing where it may cost you 25 bucks, and you can now with stuff online, you can make t-shirts and hats and coffee mugs, and you can give them to people, and it'll cost you 10 bucks. It goes a long way to, to not only make you look established, but make you feel established. And that 
plays with your confidence in it and it, it makes a big difference. So don't be afraid to splurge a little bit and make something with your name on it. Get some stickers, hand them out to your friends. I always love when I see the Boom Reactive stickers on my friends' water bottles and, and stuff like that. It, it's, a, it's a cool feeling. So get something made with your name on it and, and get it out to people because you'll start seeing these little reminders of the people that support you uh, every day. And lastly, number 10, and I learned this before I started Boom. I was taught this by a number of people. Uh, I was taught this at my grade school and kept it throughout my life at the fraternity and as a business owner, and that is ask for help, ask for advice, talk to people, do that to people because I, I do that to people and I ask for help all the time. And even today I was at a meeting with an agency about doing some editing work and I wasn't quite sure about how to work my pricing for these people. So I reached out to a friend of mine uh, who works at that agency and who does this and has done it for a long time and I'm new to editing for hire. And so I reached out and I asked advice. I've been doing this for 10 years and I asked someone, hey, what's a good way to price for editing? 10 years later, I'm still looking for advice. By the way, Dane, thanks. So there's a lot more that I've learned in 10 years, but as I quickly wrote it down, those are my 10 lessons that I've learned in 10 years. Some of them I still have to remind myself every day that it is a lesson that I have learned before and maybe I should continue to apply it. That's all, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, if you wanna start your own company, if you're hesitant about anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll try to find somebody uh, who does. That's all. See you later. Bye.